Enfio aqui um tad cada da pau da mão. A Emidriz? Tá. Olha para cima. Para baixo. Direita. Esquerda. A ponta do nariz. Olha para frente. Okay, this is a patient with Duane syndrome. Follow the finger. Keep following. And you can see that she's unable to abduct that left eye. She's also kind of turning her head. <laughs> okay. Good. Follow it back. Good. Single again? Yep, single. Okay, and what we notice is that if she looks down, she's actually able to track out a little ways. Starting to double? Yeah, double. Okay. Come back, tell me when it's single. Single. And we're going up. And you can see she can actually track out quite a ways. Tell me when it doubles. Double. Right about there. But if I bring it down from here, it holds out for a little bit. Double yet? Yeah. Yeah. But we've definitely got you to that, to the left of center. And if I start it on the midline again. Hola, ¿qué tal? Me llamo Sergio Escobar, tengo 23 años y hace tres días que sufro el trauma. Mm, ok, eh, espero que esto le sirva a alguien, a alguna persona que a lo mejor esté pasando o le ayude, a alguna persona que esté pasando por lo mismo. El primer día tenía uno, unas pequeñas, una pequeña anormalidad aquí en la punta, no podía silbar. Diga A, diga A, otra vez A.
The circle of Willis is really a beautiful piece of anatomy and represents a central hub from which radiates the entire blood flow to the brain. Arteries form as a result of an acquired structural weakness in the blood vessel wall. Arteries which carry very high flows, such as those in the circle of Willis, are thought to be particularly susceptible to mechanical damage in the vessel wall. Contributory factors, such as cigarette smoking or high blood pressure, may accelerate the process of damage to the vessel wall. The strength of the aneurysm wall is inversely proportional to its size. Lesions one centimeter or larger are particularly susceptible to sudden increase in growth and rupture. With rupture, blood spreads rapidly across the surface of the brain via the cerebral spinal fluid. Bleeding generally only lasts a few seconds. However, rebleeding may occur and is most likely within 24 hours of rupture and initial hemorrhage. This man developed symptoms of rabies. On the third day of the disease, he displays a characteristic restlessness and agitation. The most familiar clinical symptom of rabies is associated with difficulty in swallowing. When fluid comes in contact with the throat, it is violently expelled at the same time producing painful, spasmodic muscular contractions, hence the term hydrophobia, or fear of water. The accessory muscles of respiration are also affected by the attempt to swallow, so that the patient chokes and gasps for air. To avoid swallowing, he drools accumulated saliva into a cup. By the fifth day, salivation is copious and almost continuous. There is excessive perspiration and the pupils are dilated. As a precaution against the convulsions which commonly occur in rabies, the patient is secured hand and foot. He displays increasing agitation and delirium.